Hey everyone, I'm Eric Thomas of Eric Thomas Studios. Today, we'll be going into how to bring a photo alive in After Effects using the Mesh Warp. To start it off, what is the Mesh Warp? The Mesh Warp is a distort effect in Adobe's After Effects. It lets you manipulate a footage, image, or illustration using a grid of points to bend and move parts of that. As with any effect, you can use it for a number of things, but the most common, at least I think, is using it to do quick face, hair, and clothes animations. Before we can use it, we'll need the content we're planning to animate. For my demo, I'll be using a photo I took a while ago of water running through seven tubs in Pennsylvania, but it'll work with whatever you want to use, including text. Select your layer where the effect will go, then head up to the Effect menu at the top of AE. Under the Distort Effects menu, inside there, about halfway down will be the Mesh War. When you add the effect, the comp will suddenly have seven lines going across it from side to side and from top to bottom. This is the grid, which is what lets us control things. We'll need to click on somewhere where those lines meet to change things. When we do, a dot will show up in that intersection, with a handle coming out of it on each side of the point or vertex. Depending on what vertex you click, the number of those bezier handles will show up. Any of the intersections inside the grid, for example, will have four, top, right, bottom, and left. On the other hand, if you click on an edge vertex, or one of the vertices on the far sides, but not the corners, there will be three. And if you activate any of the corners, there will only be two. Whatever we do with the controls, which I'll get into next, these vertices are what we'll use to distort our content. If we click on a point, we can then drag it anywhere. As we do, the content inside our layer will bend and warp to match that vertex and the part of the grid that it'll take with it. You can also click and drag on any of those bezier handles I mentioned too. When you move one, the handle on the other side will also be dragged along if it has an opposite. So if you drag a handle on a vertex inside the grid, you'll either move the top and bottom together or the left and right together. With an edge vertex, you'll either control the top and bottom or the left and right, while the third point will move on its own. And with a corner vertex, the handles both go on their own. These are the same as Bezier handles with the pen tool, letting us curve our content. Just like there, if we drag a handle further out, the curve will get bigger and the distortion will be more significant. You can also select more than one vertex at a time by holding down shift and clicking on as many as you want to use. And before it becomes an issue, I should mention that the content will be locked into the boxes of the grid. What that means is that no matter how far you stretch a vertex out, when the content hits the edges of another box, it'll stop stretching further. You can just move other vertices to give the distortion a bigger area though. Now that that's covered, let's see what we've got in the effect controls panel. Up at the top, there are the row and column controls. These set how many lines are going across and down the comp, which will mean more intersections. More intersections will give us a higher number of vertices to use and better control over the distortion. With less rows and columns, each point will distort a bigger area of the comp. For both of these, you can only go as high as 31 and as low as 1. Next we have the quality control. This sets how closely the contents bound to the shape of the grid. The higher the quality number, the more the distortion will exactly match the shape you're stretching out or pulling in. Higher quality also means it'll take longer for the effect to render when we're saving it out as a video file. And then we have the distortion mesh. This saves any changes we make to the mesh through the timeline and is how we actually animate our distortion. To do it, like with all things in AE, you'll need to click the small stopwatch icon next to this property and move forward in the timeline to wherever you want to make changes. And when you make those changes, then it will animate. And that was the Mesh Warp effect. I hope everyone's learned something and had fun doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment below or with a message to at ET underscore studios on Twitter. 
You can also like this video and share it around. I'd appreciate the help getting the word out. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.